So this video is going to be centered on a few different topics. The first one being what we can expect out of Oculus in the form of exclusives, and then what Facebook believes where things are headed in the form of virtual reality. What Valve is working on as far as pass-through is concerned. And finally, a little bit of combat footage that we can see from the MMO Zenith. Facebook aims to create a stranglehold on the VR market using exclusivity deals. The only one that we know of at this point is with Ubisoft. They have made a few VR projects in the past, such as Star Trek Bridge Crew, Space Junkies, Werewolves Within, and Eagle's Flight. There are a few games that we have expected, and those are Assassin's Creed and Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. A few notable titles, to say the least. For those uninitiated into the whole Splinter Cell stealth-like magic, I will include gameplay footage after I'm done talking about this specific subject at least. Now as far as what we can expect out of Oculus as a company, we had all... Um, Zuckerberg announced back at Oculus Connect in 2016 that the company had specifically budgeted 500 million dollars for content. And while it's brought in a few notable productions such as Vader Immortal and Robo Recall, there are a few others that we should be able to expect, such as Asgard's Wrath and Lone Echo 2. So, without further ado, let's go on a splinter cell, shall we? Coben cough up any info? Believe it or not, yes. Nuri had a panic room installed. There's one hitch, though. Coben's source doesn't know its location within the estate. Brilliant. Do you want to hold off? No. Could work to our advantage. No need to chase Nuri down if he backs himself into a corner. How do we force Nuri into the panic room? We knock the power out. Give me access to the sex station to find the junction box and we're golden. Location? Head towards the main gate. Uploading directions to your offset. Qué tranquilidad. No oh, good. Not a guy who likes dogs.
Now, unlike Splinter Cells, Oculus Exclusivity Aspire 1 is going to be another stealth game available for all VR platforms. For those of you who haven't already seen gameplay footage of this as well as what you can expect out of it, I will also be following up this clip with another gameplay trailer of Aspire 1. Because one of the Facebook executives says that the quest is the end of the first chapter, it is time to start looking at what the second is going to hold for us. Now, the first thing on the docket that we do have to look at is varifocal lenses. Last year at Facebook's F8 conference in May, they debuted a prototype headset called Hapto, which would mechanically move the display panels to change the focal distance. So, so that that focal distance was the same as the distance to the virtual object you're looking at. The best representation I can give for this is I'm looking at the webcam, now I'm looking at a fan, my eyes didn't have to work too hard in order to change that focal distance even though they're pretty far apart. And when, com when combined with a couple other features that they do have in mind, including Deep Focus, which was debuted at last year's Oculus Connect, as well as eye tracking, that would allow for a far greater level of immersion in the virtual, re or virtual reality visual realm. Eye tracking is, of course, something that we've already seen in the form of the Vive Focus Pro Eye. A cons an enterprise level headset that HTC has thrust upon us for a few thousand dollars if I remember right. Now Oculus is not the only company that is looking into eye tracking as well as foveated rendering. Sony is also looking at this option as part of the PSVR2 headset. Now as far as what that price point is going to be, I don't really know yet, and my best estimate would probably be around the same as the launch price for the PSVR 1, which was around $400 at the time. However, we could likely expect that one to be maybe $450, just because it, allows, it would allow for wireless connectivity, but we'll get more on that later. Right now, we're focusing on the Oculus 2. Now, the next big thing that we do have to work on is finger tracking. And I'm not sure if you heard the news or not, but the Valve Index does in fact have finger tracking. However, at this specific point in time, there isn't a whole lot of useful usefulness for that technology as not a lot of developers either know how to address it or excuse me or are capable of following through with it. However, 
we should be able to expect it over the next few years to increase its adoptability simply because this is going to be one of those things that relies on the consumers in order to be able to spread just like virtual reality as a medium next up we do have face and body tracking now Facebook has already made the move in order to create a form of face tracking in their in their previous in their most recent Facebook Connect or Facebook F8 conference back in May of this year, they debuted their, their own form of virtual reality holograms using your face and facial expressions. So they, they have in fact proven that they are willing to work on that. Now as far as room sensing and meshing goes, those are going to take a little bit more work but once again they are going to be possible but while they require wire while today's headsets require you to manually define a play space that doesn't mean that using out or using inside out trackers and cameras won't be able to allow you to excuse me to define and draw those uh, obstacles using the combination of cameras. The, and e even the biggest thing that we do have to worry about is a wireless connection. One thing that we can expect if, if the quest is any sort of indication it is that Facebook and Oculus specifically aim to create a wireless space. And while, while the Quest itself is more of a standalone, we can still see that out of the Rift S headset. So they are in fact working on creating a more wireless form of PC headset and creating the whole virtual reality immersion system. What you guys are going to be seeing here in a second is a beta test for pass-through on the Steam VR platform using a Valve Index headset, altogether creating an augmented reality experience. While he seems to be using the Valve Index, the simple fact that it is on the Steam VR platform should allow for the HTC Vive as well as the Oculus Rift to be able to employ this same pass-through method even though it isn't currently available to them. Well, it, it isn't being debuted on those headsets yet. So, however, there's no confirmation of that, so grant us all. Alright, this is a quite the test here of a setup here. I've got basically a large square in front of me that shows me the AR view of my room. I think this is the old AR view that uh, may be updated. But I can look through the, the window here. My room outlines here. I set up the base stations further than they're supposed to be uh, for this current test. I can walk out of my bound. Plenty of court space here. Another window. Doggy. Oh, it's okay, doggy. Here. All right. Doggy. Let's look through. The last thing I'm going to be talking about today is an MMO currently in development called Zenith. So far the only platforms we know about that it's going to be developed for are the Oculus systems and that includes the Quest. However because they previously launched projects on Steam including Conjure Strike 
we can likely expect the HTC Vive to be compatible with it. In this gameplay footage, it shows some highly Beat Saber-like mechanics in that you would use straight down horizontal directed strikes. However, your left hand over here would be able to make those attacks more special or create more magic attacks. That is about all we know at this time. However, if you'd like to try to if you'd like to try to sign up for play tests, you can sign up in the Discord link you can find in the description down below. So, yeah. If you guys are still here and you're feeling charitable in some way, you can activate that charity in a few different ways. The first one, you can go to humblebundle.com and pick out one of the bundles that they have for sale there. When you get one of these bundles, you're not you're not only able to get some good software or books or games, or what whatever it is that you're you're choosing, but you're also able to support a charity of your choice. They have a few different ones available, so you don't have to feel necessarily tied down to helping children or animals. E even though, well, animals are always a good one, aren't they? And then, if that is up your speed, I'm selling these headphones on Amazon. Link on screen. I personally use them. I really like them, and they've been working out really well for me. If that still doesn't really work out well for you, I've got a link on screen also for my Patreon. Well, up here somewhere, I, I don't know where I'll put it, but you'll find it somewhere, I hope, probably, maybe. Uh, I think this is a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.